your Bible, Exodus chapter 18, verse 24. The word of the Lord says, So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. Somebody will say amen to the reading of God's word. Today we are in part eight of our Journeying with God series. Uh, today from the topic, we're going to minister, we're going to teach, we're going to preach with a thought in our hearts and in our minds. Daddy duty. Daddy duty. Well, we've been walking through this series and we've been looking at the, the really closely, we've been looking at the life of this guy by the name of Moses. We've been, we've been instructing you all in the fact that God selected this man of God by the name of Moses. God chose him. And Moses, through everything that he had gone through, now Moses has become the leader that God has designed and destined for him to become. Uh, the people of God, as we walk through this series, we've seen them come out of bondage and they've come through the Red Sea. And now they're journeying literally in the wilderness. They're literally at a place. Uh, they're literally at a, at a spot. They're in between. They're, they're literally kind of kind of caught in between of what God had brought them out of. And they haven't gotten yet to what it is that God has for them. They're, they're stuck in the middle. In fact, I call it the process. They, they are in the middle of the process. And many of us, uh, too, can find ourselves in the middle of a process, find ourselves in a place the where we haven't come out of we came out of something rather but we have not necessarily uh, manifested or grabbed a hold of everything that God has for us or everything that God had designed but while we're in the process God is trying to teach us some lessons God is trying to instruct us while we're in the middle of what we're in the middle of and it's just amazing how we've been walking through this book of the book of the Bible been going through the book of Exodus and looking at the life of Moses and a lot of people kind of they'll, 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 they'll say whenever you kind of go verse by verse or chapter by chapter when does the Lord get in when does the Lord when do you have something that's appropriate or something that needs to be said at the moment or the time but I'm so glad that as we've been walking through this God landed us right here in the passage that deals with a man by the name of Jethro who is a father but he's a father-in-law to Moses and here God desires to show us something I believe it's a principle in this when we see the interacting between Moses and his father-in-law I believe it's a principle for something for us to be able to lean in and grab because when we look at our society today uh, the, the, the role of the father has really gotten to the place of where we, we really have allowed our culture and we've allowed the times in which we live uh, to really redefine what God has in mind about the role and the significance of a father. Uh, there's many individuals that they kind of claim to the fame or they'll kind of hold on to the fact that where I don't need a man in my life, I don't need a father to help me with my children and all that. And I believe that there's a group of individuals, my mother included, my mother had to do what she needed to do when, when her and my father just could not get along. They just could not seemingly work out their marriage. Mom had to do what she needed to do to raise her children. And just because mom had to step up and do what she needed to do and raise her children and she raised them well, that does not mean that that's God's design. Come on. Just, just, because, just because that's what we had to do. Just because mom, just because you had to hold it down, that does not mean that that's God's design. Just because you don't the, 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 the child's father is not present. Just because you, they're nowhere to be found. God's design that every child, every person needs a father. Yes, they do. That, that, that's God's role. That's God's design. That, that you can look at that in any area of our life. Just because maybe I had children before I got married or I had children outside what we call outside of where law and it happened and God got your grace and God got your cover. God took care of you, myself included. Can I tell you, that's not God's perfect plan. Just because it happened, we always ought to go to the text and because we did it, because we made a mistake or because things happened for us a particular way, it's our responsibility Responsibility to teach our children the right way to do things. Come on, somebody. We ought, to, we ought to teach them the right way. So God has given all fathers a responsibility to love their children, to instruct their children, to discipline their children. God has given all of us responsibilities on some things that we need to do as it relates to the role of a father. Somebody say the role of a father. God has given us a role as fathers and, and maybe you don't have any biological children. I don't need you to clock out on this because we'll see even in the person of Jethro, he has biological children, but the role that he played in the life of Moses, it is not his biological son, but yet and still he was a significant part of Moses' life. So whoever it is that God puts in your path, whoever it is that God allows you to have some influence with or influence in their life, it's our responsibility to do our 
a part as relates to instructing, as relates to teaching, as relates to pouring in the life of everyone that God places around me. But our society, as our fathers under attack, has the, has the male role deteriorating right before our eyes. Yeah, yes, it does. I, I was on a Zoom call with our, with our lit uh, just a few Fridays ago, and, we, and, and one of, they, they submitted some questions to me, something that they wanted me to kind of talk about, kind of discuss, and they want to talk about all this racial tension and all this political unrest that was going on. And one of the questions they asked me about, they asked me, what do I think about Black Lives Matter? What do I think about Black Lives Matter? And, and, and can I tell you that, that I... I, I, I think much about Black Lives Matter. Can I tell you that this phrase, it, it, it is true, and I agree with this phrase, and I, I lean into this phrase. Yet, yet before, before we go to All Lives Matter, come on, we're going to get that in a second, but can I tell you that this, 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 this phrase is true all by yourself, and we can stand on this, and because we know, we understand the attack. This going on in our society, what's going on in our culture, the way of police brutality and even the police pipeline or the prison pipeline, I should say, and all of this red line and all the things we can go on and on and on about what's going on, how how it seems as if it's really not a seem, it is really going on, how how the black man has become an endangered species. So so I, I agree with this phrase. I, I agree with the movement. I agree with the movement, Black Lives Matter, but I do not agree with the organization called Black Lives Matter. I know y'all going to get mad at me, but I got you here already. Can you share for you go? Can you share for you go? I, 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 I agree wholeheartedly with, with, with Black Lives Matter. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm a Bible teacher, Bible preacher. I'm, a, I'm, I'm more of a follower of Christ than I am an African American. Come on here. Oh, hear me out now. I'm more of a follower of Christ than I am anything. I'm more Christian than I am Democrat. I'm more Christian than I am Republican. I'm more Christian than I am black or white or whatever, the, whatever my skin tone is. I'm more Christian. So I I believe in black lives matter, all lives matter, blue lives matter, red lives matter, yellow lives matter, pink lives matter. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, I believe, I, I believe that. I believe that. But but we got to know that. Come on, I'm, I'm talking to I'm talking to everyone because we we so we so quick to grab a hold to what the culture is doing and what the culture is talking about, and we have to see what society is doing. If we're not careful, I've taught you this before, but I need to remind you because because we still we still we 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 still have, we still don't have it. And here our society has got us to the place to where we'll just buy in and we'll just get along we'll just go along with the get on and we don't really know what's going on i agree with the movement standing up bringing bringing us to awareness and making sure that we change legislation and change some laws and do some things that we need to do something about our society needs to change in the regard of what's going on in our street can we get an amen on that something needs to be done but at the same time, we need to dig a little deeper into this organization to figure out exactly what are they promoting? What exactly is this about? What exactly are they trying to shove down our throat? What, what is it they're trying to shove down our throat? And this, this was taken right from their website, this little pocket. They have a, a entire list of their core values. I started to give you a whole bunch of pictures of the, of the, of the founders, and I put all their pictures up, and I guarantee you nobody know who the founders are. Nobody know exactly who the people are that started the movement, but here it's all good in the hood but let me let me just talk to you for a second because here we got to be careful on what it is that we're that we're, we that we that we're giving into that we're that we're that we're promoting that we're standing behind look what it says on on their website uh, I didn't see it the last time I went on there but this is taken exactly from their website they have a little section called black villages look what look what it says and this is why this is significant today on father's day we are committed black lives matter the organization look what they say to disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another and especially our children, meaning our black children, to the degree that mothers and parents are ch and children are comfortable. And somebody read that and they're like, okay, well, what's wrong with that, Real? What's wrong with that, Real? Explain to me what's wrong with that, Real. Well, that's why I'm here, so I can explain to you what's wrong with that. <laughs> can I tell you? Look, look what they say. They're, they're committed to disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family, the Western prescribed, the American family. What we call, when we say American family, we say we have a, a mother and a father. That, that's American family. Uh, but, but I take issue with this because it's not a Western structure. Uh, the, the family is a biblical structure. 
It has nothing to do with me being Americanized. It has everything with me doing being, 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 being biblical, being a child of God, being Christian. The Christian prescri- the prescription for a family is not two women. It's not two men. It's a man. It's a man husband. And it's a man wife. It's a, it's a, it's a female wife. The man might the wife might be in charge. But anyway, anyway, it's a it's a it's a male husband and a female wife. That's the biblical perspective. The point is that when you look closely at this organization, this is just one thing. I can go on and on and on, and we and the lit can tell you we talk for a whole hour and a half just off of just about the organization. And there are so many things that they kind of slide under the radar. But those of us that are believers and those of us that are children of God, we have to understand what it is that's going on. And look, we don't we're not bothering nobody. We love everybody. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you're struggling with. I don't care what maybe you're not even struggling. You're not even struggling. It's not a struggle at all. You're just doing your thing. And I don't it doesn't matter where you are in your life. We love everybody. But it doesn't matter what your struggle is. All of us got to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with in your life. All of us got to come to the Lord just as we are and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to do a change. Work a change in my life. What are you talking about, bro, Pastor? This is the mindset of our culture. This is the mindset of our day. We don't need men. We don't need fathers. We don't need people. They say they're going to disrupt this so the, so the wives can be comfortable and all these types of things. It's not about it's not about the Me Too, Me Too movement, about uh, women having rights and equal pay and equal rights. I agree with all of that, but we cannot push away the man out the picture or we cannot emasculate the man in such a point to where they're not needed because that's not God's design. And again, I know you've been a strong black woman. I know you've been holding it down. Nobody was there for you and your babies. I know you had to be mama and daddy, but can I tell you, you can never be to that child what a man can be. Come on here, I'm trying to tell you. You need, we, we, we all, we all need, we all need a man. We need a father in our life. But don't, the point the pastor trying to make is don't let the culture tell us how we supposed to think. Don't let the culture tell us what we supposed to believe. Again, this is not hate speech. Again, this is not saying I'm homophobic or any kind of phobic. I'm trying to tell you that what the Bible says about what we're supposed to do and how our family supposed to be structured. And it's my responsibility as a child of God to know what the culture is pushing and for me to pump the brakes. Come on. Somebody say pump the brakes, baby. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I got to pump the brakes. I know they weren't going to like that, but it's okay. I said, I, I said it anyway, but can I tell you? I, I'm all for I'm all for the phrase. I'm all for the movement. I'm all for that. But you got to dig a little deeper in these organizations and just not. It's more than just a hashtag, you all. It's more. It's more than just some T-shirts. It's more than just some banners. It's something that's pushing. And even our new president, who's pushing everybody dancing about Juneteenth for federal holiday. And we th- we tell the Lord, thank you, thank you for that. We appreciate all that. But what else are they pushing? <laughs> there, there, there's more. There's more than just that. That's a whole nother, whole nother message for this message. That's a whole nother message. But, but God has given us uh, our, our roles as fathers. God has given us this in the scripture. My primary role as a father is not just to take out the trash. My, my primary role as a father is not to bring home the bacon. It's not just to fix stuff around the house. My primary role. Come on, listen to me, men of God. My primary role as a father is to teach my children, to teach my sons, and to teach my daughter to instruct them in the ways and the ways of Lord let's do this because here look what the psalmist says Psalm 37 37 this ought to be all of our cry this ought to be all the things that we're looking for God to do in our life Psalm 37 37 it said mark Mark, mark, mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. Mark the per. Don't let that word perfect scare you. That that word just means complete. It just means mature. Come on, help me, sideline preacher. It just means it just means mature. So so I am to be living my in my, my life in such a way that my children can mark me. That that that, that my, see, they, they, see I want to be a dad. I want to be a marked man. I want to be a marked man because my children are looking at me and my children are watching me. And here I'm I'm I'm, I'm living to the best of my ability by God's grace. Be the, the live an upright life and then and the bible said the end of that man will be peace so i'm to be a model i'm to be an example i am to be a marked man the mature man pushes his family to the lord jesus christ that, that's what a mature man does not 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 make six figures not build a house from the ground up you may have built your house with your own hands come on you may have did all your own plumbing you might have did your own sprinkler system oh but what good is that if i didn't build my children and what good is all of that if i did not instruct them in the word and the will and the things of God but I am to be I'm to be a model but I'm so glad I got a group of fathers that's here sitting in front of me I got a group of fathers that's online that's gonna make up in their mind that they're gonna do their daddy duty come on anybody else gonna make up in their mind and say I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my daddy 
and do my daddy do. What, what's daddy do? They're so glad y'all so attentive. God bless you. I love y'all. Y'all the best crowd I've had all day. Look, no uh, service I've had all day. Look, uh, because here, look, it, it, it's my duty. Look at this. It's my duty to model, look at this, commitment to the Lord. This is what daddy duty is about. It's my duty to model commitment to the Lord. Happy, happy Father's Day. It, it, is, it is my duty to model commitment to the Lord. Look, look at Exodus 18 and 1. Look, we see it right here. I'm not making it up. Look at Jethro. Je Jethro, the Bible says, the priest of Midian. Lord have mercy. He's a priest of Midian. That, that, uh, come on, you don't got to be the sharpest knife in the drawer. Just as long as you're in the drawer. Come on, your, your elevator don't got to go all the way to the top, but at least, at least, at least, at least it's going up and down. But here you, you, you see right off the bat that Jethro, the Bible describes him as a priest of Midian. Look what the scripture says. It says Moses' father-in-law, he heard all that have gone, that, that, that God had done uh, for Moses and for, the, and for Israel, his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro heard about what what was going on in the life of Moses but in order for us to kind of really grab a hold to the significance of the relationship between Jethro and Moses and what God was doing now in chapter 18 we got to back that thing up a little bit oh because Moses was a fugitive Moses was trying to help his brothers he was trying he saw two of his Hebrew brothers uh, fighting with one another and he jumped in and he killed he can't know he it was an Egyptian and a Hebrew the first time he jumped in and he killed he killed the, the Egyptian then the next day he saw two Hebrews Hebrews fighting together and they said you're gonna kill us like you did the Egyptian yesterday and Moses was a fugitive Pharaoh was trying to kill him and Moses was on the run and, and as Moses was on the run the Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 verse 16 it said now the priest of Midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled the throats of to water their father's flock so there was there was there was Jethro's daughters and here the Bible doesn't even give us his name his daughters are coming to fill their water to be, able to, to be able to take care of what it is that needs to be taken care of. And the Bible says Moses was there. I, I love this because here before we ever know his name, God allows us to see his spiritual condition. Yeah. We, we, we don't look at verse 16. Verse 16. It says now the priest a minute. We don't we still don't know his name. We see his we see a spiritual condition before we ever see his name. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. In other words, before we ever know that his name is Jethro, we understand that his brother has a relationship with God. Lord have mercy. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that before we know anything else about you, before we know what, what, what you did and how you did it and what you built and what you have, that the first and the foremost thing that I need to be able to push and I need to promote, I need to promote my relationship with God. If you never remember my name, but can you remember that I was connected to somebody? You may not ever remember what I did. Come on here. Oh, but can you remember the fact that the, the one that gave me the fuel to do what I did, the one that gave me the energy to do what I did, can you remember my commitment to the Lord? And here Jethro, before we ever knew his name, the Bible said that he was a priest. Lord have mercy. Jethro was a worshiper of the one and true only God, even though he was a Gentile. Oh, because of where he come from, because of his, we can, you can trace back his lineage all the way back to Abraham's second wife, Keturah. Oh, we know about Sarah. Sarah died and Abraham got married again oh I remember I remember one brother Elder Campbell he's in heaven right now Elder Campbell told us he said his wife asked him say, he said he said he said Leon she said Leon if, if something happened to me are you gonna get remarried he said before the hearse hit the cemetery come on he go help me here he said he said the same the same preacher that said uh, we've now commit this body to the ground earth to earth and he gonna say we've gathered here together come on to say the same the same the same the same preacher don't ask your husband that before the, before the hearse hit the cemetery <laughs> I don't think that's funny. That's funny to me. That's funny to me. <laughs> but the Bible says. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. Look, um, <laughs> if, if Mo, 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 Moses, <laughs> Moses was there. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Moses was there. And the Bible says, hey, yeah, Abraham remarried. That's what it was. Keturah. It was the second wife. Abraham remarried. I had to go back. I'm like, uh, go back through the files. Here, Keturah was the second wife. And here, this was the lineage, the lineage that come from them. So here, this brother, some kind of way, knew about the one and the true only God. We'll see this as we continue to go. This brother was not a worshiper of the Midian God. But no, this was a worshiper of the one and the true only God. What am I trying to tell you? This brother knew something about God. This brother had a relationship about God. And if I can 
can talk to my fathers and just my men, period, today. The most important thing you and I need to do, we need to make sure that we're committed uh, to the Lord. Yes, sir. Oh, look what look what else it says in, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 18. Not only was he committed to the Lord, but the Bible says when they had made, when they came home, their father ruled. Oh, look at it. Raul. Look, look at his name. It's Raul. They call him Raul. So not only is he committed to the Lord, we know he's Mexican now. He's Raul. No, no, he, now he's Italian. He said, Raul, what's your name? What's, my name is Raul. Look, 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 Raul said, it said, how? <laughs> the, the, the father says, how is it that you <laughs> have come home so soon? Look, look, the Bible said, that, see, see we, when we, when we come back to Exodus 2, it just simply said that this brother was a priest to me. And I told you we saw his spiritual condition before we saw his name, right? Didn't I tell you that just a minute ago? Verse 18 gives us, uh, gives us his name is, is Raul. And here biblically, some of people have, have multiple names, had a name that mean this, a name mean that. But they call his brother Raul. But when we look at what his name means, we'll understand him a little bit better. Look what his name means. His name means friend of God. <laughs> Can I tell you that his brother is modeling a commitment to the Lord. In fact, he's a friend of God. And fathers, can you say that? That you are a friend of God? Fathers, can you say that? That the number one thing is not about you talking about what you have and what you've attained and what you've done and where you come from. But the, the number one thing we ought to be pushing and promoting is that I'm a friend of God. And that's the, that's the most lasting thing that I can leave with my children. His brother, because he was a friend of God, he added value to everybody he came in contact with. Moses was an individual that was a fugitive on the run and he lived with this brother Jethro which his name is Jethro as well for 40 years so this brother offered hospitality this brother was a server this brother was feeding Moses helping Moses he gave Moses security and sanctuary this brother opened up doors for Moses he opened up his hand for Moses and he opened up all of his cupboards for Moses this brother was a giver and whenever it is I'm a friend of God it ought to be constituted in every area of my life so it's my duty I'm talking about daddy do this. It's my duty to model commitment to the Lord. What's the second thing? We're going to get dicey right here. So a left hook coming in about five minutes. So I'm going to tell you to duck now. So look, it's my duty to, don't leave. Don't put that finger up. Don't sit down. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody going. They turn around saying, who? No, I'm just playing. Look, it's my duty to model reconciliation. Look, look at Jethro. Look what, look, what he does. look what he does in Exodus 18 too. It's going to get good. Now, now Jethro, see if you see it. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home. Mm. Hold on, let me see if you see it now. So Moses married Jethro's daughter while he was there with her. He was there for 40 years. He was fine. He was good. And here the Bible says that, that as Jethro is coming to see Moses, he's not coming alone. He's not by himself. But he's bringing Moses' wife. And that ain't bad enough. Look at verse 3. Along with her, two sons. The name of one was, was Gershom. Uh, and it just it gives you interpretation. Wait a minute. I have, the, the interpretation name is, I have been sojourned in a foreign land. Verse 4 says, and the name of the other was Eliezer, which means the God of my father had, was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Verse 5 says, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons, Moses' sons and Moses' wife. In the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. Look, look, look at the picture now. I want you to see. Y'all talking about scandal and talking about how to get away with murder and all this stuff. Man, just read your Bible, man. That's some good stuff right here. This, this sounds like some, some mess right here. This sounds like some mess. Moses leading God's people. He all out there. No, <laughs> out there and came across ten plagues. Came across the Red Sea. And here go Jethro. Uh, Je Jethro. Here, Mo, here go your wife, Moses. Come on. Here go your wife and your kids, Moses. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, know, I know you let God's people go. I know you're doing all that, brother Mo. But here go your wife and your kids. And Moses is like, where y'all came from? Because you know Moses had a stutter. That's why, I think that's why he saw a stutter. He's like, L -l -l I thought I left y'all. Come on here. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. Y'all back? <laughs> stop, 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 stop. So the scripture tells us. <laughs> that's not, the, I, I know I painted that picture. I painted that picture because it's just too funny not to say it. 
but that's that's not the picture. We we don't know what transpired. Something transpired that caused Moses to send his family to Jethro. We we, we don't we don't know what transpired. Many theologians suggest it's kind of they kind of they kind of they, they can't they ain't, they ain't decide or can't 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 really wrap our brains around what, what what happened because many think that he sent them there to protect them from the from the from all the plagues that was going on from destruction from coming out of Egypt and he sent them there so them to be safe. And we we don't know. Uh, some some think. That he sent his, his wife to Jethro to, to get, kind of give him an update, give him a report of what was going on. Saying, hey, we came out now. We don't know exactly when he sent her back. But, then, but, but I can tell you the last time we saw Moses and his wife. The last time we saw Moses and his wife was early in the narrative. And early in the book of Exodus, they, they, they didn't, they, things wasn't going so well. They got into a little, a little heated fellowship. The last time she is mentioned in the text is the, the fact that the fact that Moses was supposed to circumcise. He was supposed to cut his son. He was supposed to do something to his son and she wasn't having it. And the Bible says because Moses didn't do what it was he was supposed to do. God almost killed him. Hmm. We, we don't know. Some some suggest that. That, 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 was the, that was the thing that began their, their separation. And Moses sent her there because they, they no, we're we not, we, we not going to do this no more. But, but be that as it may, we don't know. Listen to me. Don't, don't miss this. That's not, that's not the point of the story. That's not the point of me bringing this up. The point of me bringing this up is, is not why Moses and his family were separated. That's not the point. The point is that Jethro was, had a duty to model reconciliation. That, that's the point. You, not, you missed me again. Anyway, Moses' point. Moses, Moses was out there, and the Bible says that Jethro came. Look at Exodus 18, 6. It says, when he sent word to Moses, he was so courteous. He told Moses, I'm coming. He said, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So he's giving her, he's giving Moses a heads up, saying, I'm coming with your family. Come on, watch me now. The point is, it doesn't matter why they were separated. Jethro represented re reconciliation. Oh, I'm, com I'm coming for some parents right now because can I tell you that one of, the, one of the things that we think is cute, we think is cute that our daughters and our sons come around us and they just tell us all their little business between them and their little husband and them and they what's going on and we think it's cute. Oh, you, you know you can come home anytime you want to. You know you don't need to deal with that. And I know I said I gave you a warning five minutes ago to duck. Come on here. If you, <laughs> I'm sure I'm trying to say because so oftentimes we don't realize how damaging we are in the relationships of our children. So oftentimes we don't realize how damaging we are in the marriages of our babies by getting involved. I'm not just talking about the daddies now. I'm talking about them because because be the mamas to be the main one. And because and, and, and us with our crazy self, we go the daughter go to the mama house and vent and talk about what what boo boo did and how he, he can't stand out at night and how he not answering the phone now boo boo come over for thanksgiving and he come in and say what's going on ma and she hmm and she she fixing everybody plates and hey praise the lord everybody boo boo come in the kitchen hey fi fix your husband something to eat and she and she walks out y'all don't have here and here what what and they, oh yo yo come on, i got i got i got two mamas just high five themselves over there because they i just i just rung they bed ring my bell come on I'm trying to tell you because here we, 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 we think it's cute and, and I'm not, not no, no shade no tea on nobody but the point is uh, hear me real good fathers because unless there's abuse adultery or abandonment go home to your husband Go home to your wife. I know y'all weren't going to say nothing because that's your baby. You love them. And here, that's our men. Our men say, well, keep on living, pastor. I'm not, I ain't got nothing to do with how old my kids are. It has everything to do with what the scripture says. I'm trying to tell you, I got to stay out of folk business. Now, if there's abuse, then now you got to go get your baby. Go get your son. Go get your daughter. Whoever it is. It's just not the, it's just not the brothers that are abusing. Let me testify about that now. I got a, I got a, I got a testimony about that. What happened to you? Oh, I, I ran into the wall. <laughs> it's just not the brothers now. Some, 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 it's not the sisters that <laughs> brother down at the upper house. Come on, trying to get in. <laughs> get, get in. Hey, you got a spot for me? Can I come in? Some of y'all sisters. Some of y'all sisters. If, if if you get into a, a, a fellowship, <laughs> y'all y'all are arguing with your with your wife, and she put a setup. You you with the wrong person. Come on, you need to, you need to just go on and stop. Just God talking about something. If she, if she put a setup while y'all talking, you just need to go on and say, don't worry about it, baby. What, what a remote at? What a remote? What a remote? Where's the remote? Let me get out of here. Y'all don't like me today. It's okay. Happy Father's Day. Look, so now Jethro 
model reconciliation. You, you, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this from a perspective that I, I deal with a lot of people. I talk to a lot of couples. I talk about a lot of things. And there are so many individuals that stir the pot, have somebody outside, not even in the marriage, but they on the outside stirring the pot with their, with their opinion, with how they think things ought to be. And here it's the responsibility of that husband, responsibility of that wife to make sure there's nobody else more important than that couple. Come on. And I'm trying to tell you that Jethro, we don't know why they were separated. We don't know. Maybe he was just accompanying them, bringing them back. Maybe she came with the news or maybe they, maybe Moses sent them packing. It makes no difference. But Jethro was a man that said, no, I'm bringing you your family. Come on. I'm looking for a man of God that'll stand up and tell their son, no son, I'm not finna co-sign with you on that food. That's your child. Need to take care of your child. No, baby, you married him. I told you to wait, but you was a little too hot to try. And he went on and got married. That's your husband. He went on going to clean up, going to cook, going to do what you need to do, going to do your wife duties in Jesus name and do what you need to do you're not going to be coming home every other weekend y'all don't like the pastor y'all like the preacher y'all don't like the pastor y'all like the preacher y'all want me to preach y'all want me to be pastor when I start pastoring then y'all start saying I'm petty but look let me tell you here look look at, look at verse 8 look at verse 8 let me go let me leave y'all alone because I want y'all I still want y'all to tell me heaven follows it after service so look look at, look at verse 8 Exodus 18 8 look what the Bible says then, then Moses told his father-in-law get her away from me no that's not what he says that's not what it says. <laughs> then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord has done. And Pharaoh and the Egyptians and Israel say, so he's, he's telling it, he's giving Jethro an update about what was going on. So we're talking about daddy duty. D daddy duty. It's, it's my duty. It's my duty to model commitment. Somebody say model. model. It, it's my duty to model reconciliation. Say model. model. And it's my duty to model support. Come on, fathers. It's my duty not only to model commitment to the Lord, not only reconciliation, but also to model support. The Bible says that Moses updated Jethro on everything that was going on in his life. Verse 9 says, then Jethro, look at this, rejoice for all the good the Lord had done for Israel and had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. In other words, Jethro celebrated what, what was going on in the life of Moses. So oftentimes, we don't even realize because we're so we're so hard to please. Oftentimes, our children won't come and bring us their wins. Because maybe we mishandled them when it comes down to their losses. Whenever things happen, if somebody have a, a bad season in life, they make a bunch of mistakes, get fired, go out there and mess up. And every time you come around, every time they come around, rather, they, you reminding them of this and telling them about this and telling them about that. And when, when it comes time for them to start winning, they're not going to come to you not, because you, you don't know how to support. And oftentimes we, we do this as men. We want to be tough. We want to be hard. We want to we raise up. And here we don't know how to celebrate. All I'm trying to say is that when my child is winning, I, I, can't, I, don't, know, I don't sit there and critique them and tell them how they can do better. I got to learn how to celebrate them where they were. Lord have mercy. Boy, you throw that thing one more time. I'm going to kick you out of here. Verse 10 says, Exodus 18, 10 says, Jethro said, blessed be the Lord who was delivered. Here it is. Look what Jethro said. Jethro said, blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptian and out of the hand of Pharaoh. But here Jethro is celebrating Moses by what it is that God is doing. Come on fathers. When was the last time you celebrated your son? When was the last time you celebrated your daughter about what God was doing in their life. They may not have done life the way you wanted them to do life. Oh, but they still made it. They may not have went to school the way you want them to go to school. Oh, but they still doing all right for themselves. Maybe they had a child a little too fast. Maybe they dropped out of college. Maybe they can't get themselves together. They license suspended. Maybe they can't keep a job. But can you look at them and say, well, at least you're still cute. Come on, can you find something to celebrate? Look at you over there with your yourself with you looking like your daddy and all you don't got nothing else to say but I'm looking like your daddy and all look at you over there I like the way you hold your head find something to celebrate yeah she broke yeah he broke find something to celebrate yeah help Lord look let me go let me go let me go let me go is this all right y'all am I messing up already am I messing up it's okay it's okay okay all right Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look, look at Exodus 18, 12. That's why you want my favorite. Look, Exodus 18, 12. And Jethro, look at this. Moses' father-in-law, uh-oh, Jethro brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And look, here, here, Jethro is so happy 
about what God is doing in the life of Moses that he begins to worship God for what God is doing in the life of Moses. When was the last time, come on, not just fathers, everybody, when was the last time you detached yourself from your life so that where you're able to celebrate and to worship God for what God is doing in the life of somebody else? When, 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 can, I, when can I celebrate somebody else? And this is the responsibility of us as fathers to learn to support our children, to celebrate our children, or to, to, to yes, to check them on their losses, and to be getting there, yes, to correct them when they're wrong. We're going to get there, but also need to learn how to ask God to help me to be able to celebrate them when they when they do things right look what Paul said if in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 he said father do not provoke your children to anger so oftentimes we love saying that we you ought to honor honor our children ought to honor 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 and they're supposed to but when was, last, when was the last time you thought about how you provoke your children when, when was the last time? Yeah, they're supposed to honor. Yes, they're supposed to respect. Yes, in my house, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, they're supposed to honor, respect. Do what it is I tell you to do. But when was the last time you thought about how you jug them? And when you jug them and when you keep saying and keep nagging and keep t putting them down and keep calling them names and keep calling them dumb and stupid and look at you with your dress looking like a little this and like a street woman. You know all them little words you say. Come on. And then you say all of that and you and you tear them down with your mouth. And then you wonder when they get to a place when they begin to retaliate and say some things. Maybe, maybe because you've been poking them and maybe you've been saying some things. That's not, not an excuse for them to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to look at it from the other perspective. Because we can provoke people. And then, see, we can poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear. Then when the bear claw us, now we want to cry victim. Let me get out of here. Y'all don't like this. So, so I, 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 call this, I call this a knuckle sandwich of fathers. I call this knuckle sandwich. I call this knuckle sandwich because there are five things that, that I believe that all of us as fathers ought to strive to do and to make a part of our hearts and our life. I am the number one. I'm a do, do not be overcritical. That's one. Do not be overcritical. As always, we can always do things better. But you don't have to tell me how to do things better right now. Do you always got to tear me down? Can't you just say, good job, son? Can't you just say, I'm proud of you, son? Can't you just say, thank you, daughter? You make me, you make daddy so proud, girl. Can't you just say that? Or you do have to say that and then add your little stuff at the end. Can I tell you, you don't understand how that, how that affects you. Nothing, nothing. Uh, my, my dad came to, my, my dad helped us get this facility. He helped us get this facility because we, we, we had something in mind thinking that when we was coming to close, that we were moving from Main Street over here, and we, 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 we came in, and we did what we needed to do. We got to the closing table, and they said, well, we needed, we needed twice as much as what we thought we needed. I went, I, went, I went over to my dad's house. I just went over there because I, I generally would check on him, would call him, check on him, drive by, all that kind of stuff. And he it was like, he's like, well, what happened with the building? Because I didn't say anything about the building. So what happened to the building? I said, well, we weren't able to get it. He said, well, what's right? What happened? So I told him what happened. He said, come on, get in the car. I said, all right. So we went to the car. He got, he, by this time, he had a cane, a little limp and all that. He limped right up to the window. We told the lady, and turned around and gave me what I need. And I'm like, this joker here had all this money, all this time. <laughs> we were right here, sitting here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pop. Thank you, Dad. I called him Dad. D-A. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. He gave us what we needed. Listen to me real quick. He came in this building for service one time. He came to service one time because he had took, he had gotten sick. The cancer got aggressive. He came to service one time. And then one time he came, looked around, saw everything. I'm proud of you, son. One, one thing, one thing, he said, one thing about you. I said, thank you very much. Thank you back there. One, thank you. Thank you. Tell, thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> He said, one thing about you, you believe in doing what you need to do. You believe in getting what you need in order, whenever you feel like God telling you to do something. And that right there, nobody can ever take that away from me. It wasn't, how come this and how come that? He said, I'm proud of his son. And that's all I'm trying to say, my friend. And you don't know how long. My dad had been gone for years now. But I still remember he said, I'm proud of, I'm proud of his son. When was the last time you wasn't so overcritical? Oh, not only that, don't be over strict. Amen, Pastor Kobe. Because I... I don't, I don't play the gospel. Come on here. I don't play the gospel radio. I don't, I don't, I don't play. Ain't, ain't that right? I don't, I don't play. Look, I'm, uh, don't, be, don't be over strict. In other words, we, we've seen this so many times. You, 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 you smother your child. You, you don't let them do anything. And as soon as they say, I want to be where the people are. I want to see Want to see him dead? So then when they start whispering and, and, and wondering about getting up out of there, y'all know about Little Mermaid. Out where they walk, out where they run, out where they stay all day and does. Uh, anyway, when they break camp, they break camp for real. Because we smothered them. Don't, don't be over strict. Y'all don't like this. It's okay. Don't be irritated with your children. 
How is it that you can love everybody? Be so courteous to everybody. Be so God bless you, everybody. But then when it comes to your children, you are you're so irritated and you're irritable and you can't you can't stand them asking you one little question. Don't be inconsistent. If you say, I've learned, if, you're gonna, if you say you're going to do something, by the grace of God, you need to do what it is that you say you're going to do. We need not be inconsistent. And this is damaging. I run across this all the time. Don't show favoritism. Amen. This, is, this is a knuckle sandwich. There's knuckle sandwich. These five things that I think all fathers need to strive to. Fathers, grandfathers, uncles, um, um, mentors, all of us need to fight to be this and to model this and to do this. Not to show favoritism. You can't have your favorite child. You can't treat one one way whenever it is they mess up and another one mess up, then you treat them another way. You need to be consistent and not show favoritism because children hold on to this. They hold on to all these little, all these little moves, all these little things, all these, and they hold on to the rest of their life, and, they, and it can cripple them and damage them. But here, uh, the, the Bible lets us know that we have responsibility as fathers to shape our children, to mold our children, to instruct our children. And look how Moses' father-in-law interacted with one another. Exodus 18, 13 says, the next day Moses sat to judge. The next day after they worship, the Bible says Moses sat down with his, with his, to sat down to judge the people. And the people stood around Moses from morning to evening. Moses is coming. Moses is doing what it is he needs to do. He's judging the people. He, here it is. This is two or three million people. And one man is sitting there judging the people. He's, he's dealing with their matters. He's saying, well, you, well this, this person said, I stole their cow. And he said, no, I didn't. they saying they owe me money. No, I didn't. This person cheated. This person lied. And Moses is literally sitting there dealing with all of this stuff all day long. Here, Moses is leading God's people. Hear me good. Moses is shepherding God's people. Hear me real good. Moses is the father of the people in, in a way. And yet and still he's doing it and he has blind spots. That, that's what I almost preach. I almost preach blind spots. Because Moses is doing what he thinks he's, he's doing, what he thinks he needs to do. He's doing all that he's supposed to do. But bro, Moses got some blind spots. He don't, he don't see himself. And can I tell you that all of us have blind spots. Every person under the sound of my voice has blind spots. If you don't think you have blind spots, then boo-boo, that's your blind spot. Come on. <laughs> All of us have blind spots. Well, I don't got no blind spots. I'm good. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. That's a, that's a telltale sign of somebody that don't see themselves. And here, all of us have blind spots. Somebody say blind spots. All of us have blind spots. I love what John Maxwell said. John Maxwell says the blind spot, blind spots are an area in our lives, of the area in our lives, in the lives of people and, and, and fathers and leaders in particular, in which they continually do not see themselves or their situation realistically. A blind spot is when a person does not see themselves or their situation realistically. A blind spot is the inability for one to see themselves the way that others see themselves. Hmm, I just confused you because I said that wrong. Y'all was like, huh? It's the inability to see. Because I was like, what did I say? The inability for you to see yourself the way that others see you. It's the way that I'm trying to say. In my mind, I may feel like I'm the world's greatest father. In my mind, I feel like I'm the world's greatest husband. In my mind, I might feel like I'm the world's greatest wife, world's greatest daughter, world's greatest whatever. And I might, but the, the, the blind spot is to only see it your way. Have your confidence. Know you do what you do. But you need to be able to see how others view you. But persons that have blind spots, they say things like this. I, I don't see it that way. Whenever somebody comes to confront them, whenever somebody calls them out on their action, call them out on something that they do, I don't see it like that. I just don't see it at all. And here can I tell you that there are some blind spots. Lord, y'all got quiet. There are some blind spots that we have as fathers. Hear me real closely. Here's the point of the message. There are some blind spots that we have as fathers or as parents just in general that create so much confusion in the lives of those that we are leading. Because of our glaring blind spots, the people that are lead, the people that are following us, our children, and anybody we come in contact with, they're confused. Because you're telling me I need to do this. But yet and still, you're doing this. You're telling me I'm supposed to respond this way, but you don't respond that way. 
you telling me to say yes ma'am to my mama, but you calling her out of her name. <laughs> you, you, you telling me what I'm supposed to do, but you don't do That's called a blind spot. And all I'm trying to say is, is Moses had a blind spot. Moses was doing what he thought was right. He was doing it the best way he can do it, but he had blind spots. And here, what am I trying to tell you? That too often times, our unproductive behavior, the way that we are, the way we were raised, the way we do life. And come on, many of us that are old school men and old school parents, we the way we are. We tough. We do this. We say this. We handle situations this way. And can I tell you, it doesn't matter how you were raised and how you do what you do. Whenever God shows you something or reveals something to you that something needs to change about me, I can't act like I don't know it or just blame it on how I was raised, but I need to make a change. Somebody say make a change. I need to do better. I'm never beyond growth. I'm never beyond development. The learner always surpassed the learn. If you think you know it all, somebody who's learning gonna run right past you. I can't ever get to the place where I feel like I know everything. Oh, but every day I'm trying to be a better wife. Every day I'm trying to be a better husband. Every day I'm trying to be a better parent. Every day I'm trying to serve God better. I'm trying to go deeper. Trying to go further. I want God to use me more. I can't act like I got a cone on the things of God. Ah, uh, preach Pastor Kobe. Oh, the, 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 the accusation to most men is nobody can tell them anything. The accusation against most men is especially not from my wife. Who you talking to? Don't be come telling me anything. I'm the man of God. I'm, I run this out. The only scripture they know, you, you, they got it on the back. They got one part on, on this shoulder, say man, and then on the shoulder, they say is the head. And they'll turn around and do like that, and they'll come together. Man is the head. That's the only scripture they know. <laughs> only scripture. <laughs> man, man is the head. And here, the, 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 point, the point is, I feel that right over here. Can I tell you, the point is, <laughs> the, the point is this. Is that I can't just, I can't, I can't get to the place where nobody can tell me anything. You would think, look at, look at Moses. Moses is the leader of millions of people. His father-in-law is not even in the bunch. His father-in-law is not even in the mix. His father-in-law is the outsider coming in. And here it is. He sees. He sees what Moses is doing. And Moses in there watching everybody, guarding everybody, hearing all of their matters. Moses, where you help it? Where's your help? There are elders that are, that are situated in the, in the people of God. We saw this in Exodus 4, 4, chapter 4, verse 29. The Bible said, then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together, what? All the elders of the people of Israel. There are elders. There are some elders that are there. In other words, there are some people that can help Moses. But Moses is doing it all by himself. So here, what, what, the duty of a good father is this. is the duty of a good father. Is, it's my duty hmm, to model watching. I need to watch. I need to watch. I need to watch. Y'all hear me? I, I need to watch. Do, do you even know what's going on in your house? You come home every night. You live there. But do you even know what's going on in life for your children? Do, are you watching enough? Are you sober enough to even know what's going on in, in your wife's life? And, and notice the, the, don't know she haven't slept. Notice she's not eating. Notice something not going on. Are you watching? And here, here the duty, the duty, uh, uh, daddy duty is I need to model watching. Look at Exodus 18, 14 says when Moses' father-in-law saw, somebody say saw, when he saw all that he was doing being Moses, all he was doing to the people, he was watching, he was perceptive. Oh, he was in tune to what Moses was doing. And he said, what you doing, son? What, what, what's going on? Oh, and not only that, not only should I be watching, I shouldn't just jump because I see something is all. And see, men, we're fixers. When something goes wrong, we want to fix it. When I, I've learned, come on, 16 years in the game, I've learned when my wife trying to talk to me about something, she's not necessarily trying to get me to fix it. Come on, when she having an issue, she don't want me to give her the, well, do this, do A, B, C. And here she said, well, I got that, Kobe. Can I talk to my husband? I'm not trying to talk to Pastor Kobe right now, and I'm trying to fix it. I got something else to do. What we talking about? Come on, you don't talk about this for 35 minutes minutes come on let me just tell you how to fix this I'm trying to talk to my husband and see we're fixers and I've learned come on we don't, don't need no fixer upper oh come on I know that was frozen and then a little fixer upper they don't want she don't want no little fixer upper come on here she wants somebody that's gonna listen to the oh y'all not gonna help me in here I'm trying to find somebody to learn how to listen and learn how to see what's going on not just have not just tell your child how to fix it not just tell your child what they're doing wrong but hear their heart and see what's going on and not jump in and just try 
try to fix it, Lord Jesus. Can I tell you, it's my duty. Oh, to model seeking understanding. And that's what Jethro did. Jethro saw it, but he looked for understanding. Look at verse 14 again. He said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people standing around you from morning to evening? Verse 15, and Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. Verse 16, and when and when they have a dispute and they come to me, I decide between, between one person and another and I make them know the statutes of God and his law. Verse 16, when they have a dispute and they come to me, I try, I try to tell them I settle the issue is what Moses said. The daddy said, what are you doing, son? Moses said, I'm, I'm just doing what I know to do. Moses, you got a glaring blind spot. Let me see. Let me see this. Because, because it's my duty. Somebody say duty. It's my duty to model instruction. I love this about Jethro. Jethro didn't see Moses doing something damaging and not say anything. He saw it. He saw it. And then he, he gave him, he asked for some information. And then now he's going to give him some instruction. Look at verse 17. It says, Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you are doing, come on, let's say it together, is not good. Come on, y'all going to miss the point of the message here. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, he, he saw Moses, he, he saw what was going on. He asked for some understanding, and now he's giving him some instruction. And he said, what you're doing, son, is not good. I, I, I've learned that, that there are so many fathers that rely on the mother to fix everything. Go to your mama. What your mama say? And, and, and see, it's, it's nothing wrong with doing this together. We're, we're, we're raising children together. I had to learn this. We had to learn. We had to get on the same page. That's why you need to have some marriage counseling before you get married. Because here, she has a way of raising children and disciplining children. And I have a way of disciplining children. And if we don't get on the same page, now the, the bad child going to bring a wedge between us. Because I believe in this way. Or I believe in doing it that way. And she believes in doing that way and that way. And see, that's why you got to slow down before you get married and talk about this stuff. What's going to happen when we have babies? What's going to happen when we have children? Do you, do you believe in spanking? Do you believe in no, 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 spanking? Spanking. All you got to do is say it. If they don't believe, no, we put, put our children in time out. They stand in the corner. No, we don't put our hands on our babies. No, you, you, better, you, better, you better talk about it. You worried about whether he got a six-pack or not. You need to figure out, <laughs> need to figure out how y'all... How y'all raise your children? The point is, that was a, it was a, it was a, when when Kendall came around, that was a, uh, that was a, di a huge disagreements on how we raise, and, and I had to learn how to adjust, and she had to learn how to adjust our, on our parenting skills. But the point that I'm trying to make to you all today is, is it what fathers? We can't just let our wives do it all when it comes to, when it comes to we, when we see something, we know something, we got some understanding, we got to give some instruction. A silent father is a weak father. A silent father that never says anything, never changes anything, never fixes anything, never corrects a thing, never say shut up, sit down. Oh, my, my children can be talking to my wife. They're not even talking to me, and they're not answering the right way. I said, how do you say that? You're not even talking to me. I'm sitting there. I'm going to do my own business. I said, yes, ma'am. I don't just sit there and say, well, she'll deal with it. She'll handle it. No, I'm, I'm the daddy around here. I'm the, this is my house. I'm the father. You're not going to talk. I don't talk to her that way. You sure won't. <laughs> Lord, that mercy. Oh, God. Beat me up, Scotty. Let me get up out of here. They don't like me. They're going to run me and slap out of town. Uh, I'm going to start a church there. Wherever they run me to, I'm going to start one over there. Uh, truth and love, Middleburg. Let, let me see. Look. <laughs> Jethro was such a man, I got the roll. They, they try to try to figure out how I'm going to do this because I know I got like a hundred more slides. We're going to get there. They're trying to figure out what, how, how is we going to do this. Look, let me, let me go. Because Jethro was such a man. Look what, his, look what Jethro, we, I told you what, what Raul means. <laughs> Raul means what? Oh, boy, if I had another gift card, girl, I give you that gift card. I don't got no more. Yeah, he's a friend. He's a friend. But, but look what Jethro means. Jethro means abundance. Mm. In other words, He's such a man that he got enough wisdom for himself and enough to give to somebody else. Lord, have mercy. I, I love this about Jethro because not only did Jethro, and see, we know Jethro not hating on Moses because he celebrated Moses before he corrected Moses. 
He celebrated him before, way before he ever corrected him. He celebrated him. And this is what we're supposed to do. Fathers, come on, my friend. We're supposed, we're supposed to be able to see what's going on in the life of our children. And we're supposed to bring them instruction. And this is the point of what I'm trying to tell you. The daddy duty is to instruct our child, not just to give them food, not just to take care of them and provide for them. That's a part of it. Many of us got that taken care of. But we're supposed to instruct our children as relates to the ways and the things of God. And we're supposed to hold our children accountable. Oh, I'm going to say it one more time. Every, every child needs a father and every man needs a father. I said every child needs a father and every man needs somebody they can be accountable to. Every man needs somebody. Don't bring me nobody to marry. If you're trying to marry her, listen to me. All of my little truth and love ites. Come on, all my little, all my little, all my, all my single ladies, all my single ladies. Don't bring me nobody that he don't say yes, sir, to. If he coming up here and he don't say yes, sir, to somebody or somebody can get himself together and tell him to sit your butt down, that stupid boy you need every man needs a man don't you get hooked up with somebody who don't listen to nobody yep patty cake patty cake baker's man i'm not gonna counsel you i'm gonna counsel you because <laughs> i'm gonna tell you because what happens if you don't have anybody to listen to what happens when you tell him no every man needs a man Every man needs somebody that they're accountable to. Oh, and here, this is what we're supposed to do as fathers. Look at this. It's, it's replete. This is what the whole book of Proverbs is. It's about instruction. I'm going to rapid read these. I'm going to rapid read these. Y'all just write these down. If you can, just get the CD. It's online. Go back and listen to it. Proverbs 1 and 8. Let's see if you can catch the point of the message. Look what the proverb writer said. Proverbs 1 and 8. Hear my son. Your father's what? instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching proverbs 2 and 1 who says my son if you receive my words and treasure and treasure up my commandments with you proverbs 3 and 1 my son do not forget my teaching but let your heart keep my commandments oh we're supposed to instruct our children we're supposed to pour into our children and proverbs 4 and 1 hear O sons a father's instruction and be attentive that you might gain insight proverbs 4 and 10 hear my son and accept my words that your years may be light that your years of life may be many Proverbs 5 and 1 my son be attentive to my wisdom incline your ear with my understanding Proverbs 6 and 1 my son oh if you have put up security for your neighbor have you given your pledge to a stranger Proverbs 6 and 20 says my son keep your father's commandments Proverbs 7 and 1 my son keep my words what you trying to tell me Pastor Kobe you see these verses I could have gave you a thousand of them over and over and over son hear my instruction son hear what I'm trying to tell you and that's the role of every God ordained man, every duty of every daddy, every duty of every man that got responsibility over anybody I'm supposed to give you some instruction not just to teach you how to change a tire not just to teach you how to flip, flip an omelet not just teach you how to change a radiator not just teach you how to go to work but I'm going to give you God's word and instruct you in a way, y'all not helping me preaching here I'm supposed to instruct you instruct you in the things of God, it's not the church's job to raise your children it's your responsibility, Father, to instruct your child, to tell your child, what am I supposed to, somebody say, what am I supposed to instruct? Oh, that was so sorry. What am I supposed to instruct? Somebody say, what am I supposed to instruct? Oh, y'all sound like a mass choir. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate that. To fear the Lord. I'm going to teach my child how to fear the Lord. To reverence him. To acknowledge him. What, what else am I supposed to teach my, my son? I'm going to teach my children how to guard their mind. I'm going to teach them what to put in their mind. And what to push out of their mind. That's my responsibility. What else am I supposed to teach my child? How to obey authority. Oh, I love all these little cute parents. Don't, don't tell their children nothing. Don't let their children do it. I don't know. They good. They good babies. They don't do that. Okay. You, you teaching them and you training them and you raising them up so the streets can beat the brakes off of them. Because a child has to learn how to listen to somebody. And when you don't teach them how to obey authority, blue lives will. I need to teach them how to obey authority. I'm going to teach them how, yes sir, I need to teach them how to control their bodies. The only instruction my father gave me when it comes down to sex, my father just said, take, take, your, take your raincoat. Catch that in the spirit. Y'all don't like that. I'm saying he didn't sit down and tell me not to do it. He didn't sit and say, wait till you get married. He didn't say nothing. He just said, just don't bring that home. 
That's not the way you instruct your children. Come on. Oh, my God. I said this in the Christian church. I said, if I said this at the, at the, at the, at, 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 I don't know, no clubs no more. I was say 618. I know 618 gone. What's that? What's that? Club? Don't worry about it. Anyway. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The Bible says, I'm going to teach my child. Give me the next one. I'm going to teach my child how to choose their friends. I'm going to teach them how to choose their friends. They don't just sit there and just everybody they all in love with, everybody they know. You teach them how to choose their friends. You teach them how to work hard. Yes, sir. You, te- you teach, come on with me. You teach them how to work hard. You teach them the beauty of marriage. You teach them how to love their, ma- their, love their neighbor. You need to teach your child, and this is what Pastor Kobe is trying to tell you, not only to your baby, not only to your child, not only, come on, fathers, mothers, everybody on the side of my voice. Jethro told Moses, what you're doing is wrong. Let me ask you a question. Can anybody tell me what I'm doing is wrong? It's real hard for you to tell your child something. And you don't do it yourself. <laughs> it's real difficult. It's real difficult. Can anybody, is there anybody in your life, listen to me. Is there anybody in your life that they tell you what you're doing is unwise? You'll at least consider not doing it. We live in a society now, people don't come to get counseling from their pastor anymore. Mm-mm, they don't come to get counseling. They come to confess. Confession is this what I'm about to do. I say, you don't need to do that. God told me to do this. Is there anybody in your life that can tell you what you're doing is wrong? Y'all not helping me here. It's okay. I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all was, y'all was all excited, all worshiping. Abba. All that early. No, no, come back. Come back. Come on. He still belong. You still belong. He still belong and all that. Come on here. You're more real. Come on. Come on. And so it is. So it is. So it is in the natural. So it is in the spiritual house. In the spiritual house, it should be the same thing. Galatians 6 and 10 says, says so that we, so, so then as we have opportunity. Look at this. Let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are where? In the household of faith. The, the house of God is a household of faith. And when we have people, the spiritual leaders that we're accountable for or accountable to, we listen to their instruction. We listen to what it is they, they're teaching, what they're trying to train. And here, I'm not one of these guys that sits around and, and nothing wrong. It's, it's all biblical. I'm telling you my perspective. This is Pastor Kobe's perspective. This is where I am, uh, J- uh, J- June the 20th, 2021. This is where I am. I'm not a guy that walks around and say, I'm your spiritual father. I'm your this. I'm your that. I'm, I, don't, I don't do that. Y'all say it to me. That's fine. I'll take it. Praise the Lord. I'm your spiritual father. I'm your this. I'll mean, take it all day. But I'm not one of those guys. I'm not there yet. That's me. But the point is, it's biblical because the scripture, give me that scripture again, it says it's a household of faith. It's a household of faith. And a, and a, a biblical natural house has a, um, has a father and a mother. A spiritual house has a father and a mother. And that's the way that God describes it. It says it's a household of faith. But the point that I'm trying to make is, is that so many of us that's doing our own thing, there's so many of us that have deduced the word of God and the things of God that, we, that where we just have a preacher, we don't have a father. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All righty then. Let me get so. So here, here, here Moses is Moses sitting down, gut, God, and sitting there judging all these, all these fellas. And, 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 and Jethro, I'm done. Jethro saying, where is your help? And I want to ask the same question. Where are the men? Where are the men? Moses, you sitting here counseling, talking to two, three million people. You doing all of that. Where are, where's your help? Where is the men? Now, and I say the same thing to, to, to truth and love. I'm trying to figure out where, where our men are. Our men have enough faith to go to work every day, but don't have enough faith to come to the house of God. I'm just trying to figure out where our men is. Our, our men have enough faith to go to Longhorn and got enough faith to go to Walgreens and got enough faith to go to McDonald's and got enough faith to do everything else. But our men, they sit around and we just let everything be done by everybody else. Yes, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Because it makes my, it, it, it gets me to the place where I try to, I try to question, what am I doing? What am I doing? The way 90% of our outreach efforts are done by seasoned saints, women. 
When I was just up here Wednesday, just when, just this past Wednesday, no shade, no tear, nobody. This is my testimony. I'm up here Wednesday. We was giving out the Matthew 25. We got we got two seasoned saints, ladies out there, by themselves, and it's so bad. Somebody passed by and said, "I don't see no men out here. Y'all need some help." We got we're so bad. They out there breaking down tables, putting the tent up, and I, I got I got to preach in a couple of hours. I don't, I don't even still got my. I'm trying to I'm still trying to buy a message off of message.com. I don't got no come on here. I'm still I'm still trying to get my message together. That's not. No, that's not. Yeah, that's what y'all think I have. Yeah. What you? Yeah. Did I wake you up, Pastor? That's my favorite thing. Somebody coming out. Did I wake? I'm sorry. You sleep. You did I wake you? No. I'm just trying to work. The, the, point, the point is, where the men? Every outreach, ever we have, we have a handful of men that come to help us to do what we need to do. But but the majority of our volunteers and here as men, we'll see the women dancing around. We'll see them shouting. We'll see all that. And we'll say, oh, they're so emotional and all oh, they so this. But the women be here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to get up out of here. Did you hear that? Ain't nobody saying nothing, Lord. Have mercy. That's okay. Oh, preach, Pastor Kobe. I'm trying to say, where are the men? Where are our brothers? Will the men of God stand up and be the men of God? All I'm trying to say is, is what it is that we need to do. But just like in the case of Moses, we, if everybody handled the things of God and the work of God the same way that you handle it, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Oh, but we need you to be able to do your part. You don't got to do everybody else's part. You don't got to be up here every day. You don't got to be at every event. But will you step up and do your part, Moses? sitting there doing all of that because he didn't have any men helping him so Moses had to do what he needed to do and people that text me all the time it kills me pastor go home pastor you up here too late you always up here well what you think I need to do if I was to act like some of y'all come on here I'll be home right now I'll be at brunch this morning oh because we go to brunch now because of the pandemic we go to brunch on Mother's Day on Father's Day and we hang out and we eat oh but no my friend I still got to be the man of God I'm still on the wall I got a brick in one hand and a sword in the other I'm going to do what it is God called me to do come on put your hands together and give God some praise up in here that's all I'm trying to say y'all can stay standing I'm done play something for me I'm done I'm not, we ain't even going there today because I need you to hear me Moses doing all of the work <laughs> And the Bible says that Jethro gave him some advice. He said to them, he said, Jethro, Jethro says to Moses, there's three things you need to do. He said, the most reading we get a chance. He said, he said, Moses, you need to pray. Carry the people's complaints to God. Pray. He said, pray. Moses, after you pray, he said, you need to, now you need to teach the word. That's what the leader is supposed to do in the spiritual sense. My ultimate role and my ultimate responsibility is to pray and teach the word. Pray and teach the word. But we have so many individuals that they won't step up. It's not a beat me up message either. This is a pick me up. This is a message that where we need to we need to examine ourselves, men and everybody on the sound of my voice. See, how am I handling the things of God? He said, Moses, I need you to pray. I need you to teach. And not only that, Moses, I need you to delegate. Somebody say delegate. delegate. I need you to delegate. He said, pick some men, some able men. Some men full of the Holy Spirit. Some men that, that are apt to teach. Some men that, that you trust. To be able to help you do the work of the ministry. And this is not a one-man show. It's never, never meant to be a one-man show. And I'm thankful for every faithful brother, every committed brother. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. I'm faithful. I, I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative of every faithful brother, every committed brother. And I'm not talking, if, I, if, you, if you're working, I'm not talking to you. If you're working around the clock, you're doing this and you're doing that, I'm not, I'm not talking. I'm talking to the people that know who I'm talking to. We have the hundreds of guys that are, that are part of our ministry. But we treat the things of God as if it's only for ladies. This is a, when the men of God be the men of God and be the fathers of the houses. Then the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's nothing that we cannot do. Oh, God, help me.
On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.